I am zoologist and adventurer Nigel Marvin. For years, I've crisscrossed the globe in search of the most dangerous animals alive today. But just imagine a prehistoric safari. My dream is to meet the largest and most extraordinary creatures that have ever lived. To travel back in time and walk with dinosaurs. So this was the start of my prehistoric safari, my adventure into the world of dinosaurs. But I wasn't here to just sightsee, I had a mystery to solve. What is this? A 28 inch claw? When it and paleontologists called the creature Therosinosaurus, or the Scythe Raptor. This was it, my first dinosaur encounter. My tent had been flattened by a gigantic herbivore called Sorolophus. At 40 feet long, the biggest plant eater in the area. Perfect start to the expedition, even though those brilliant duck bills actually trashed my tent. But this, of course, is the reason I'm here and I'm in just the right place to find the owner. This is the Nemec Desert, and I'm on the eastern side of the giant continent of Laurasia in the late Cretaceous, that's 75 million years ago. In the 21st century, the arrangement of continents is very different, and where I am now will be present-day Mongolia. I don't know if I'm gonna find claws, I don't know what I'm gonna see, but whatever happens, this is going to be a cracking adventure. Ceratops. These were so common in the Nemec Desert 75 million years ago. Some paleontologists call these the sheep of the Cretaceous. Although these are little vegetarians, they're about seven feet long. They've got really powerful beaks. And by the look of them, a bite from one of those could snap an arm or a leg. <laughs> Those jaws are really formidable, but I've got to get through the nesting colony and over to the other side, there's some lush rainforest there, and that may be the home of the giant claw. But to do it, I'm gonna take a calculated risk. The dinosaurs' closest relatives, the birds and the crocodilians, they can see well in color, and if I use this, the protoceratops may be deflected away from me and they'll follow the flag. So, let's see if it works. Nigel. 
area of the Nemec Desert is called a productive dune system. These great big dunes and then sandwiched in between this verdant rainforest. It's windy here, you can see the sand grains whipping off the top. These dunes are marching, so every now and then the forests are swamped and then eventually a new forest grows, so there's always new growth here for dinosaurs. And this is the first forest I found and hopefully down there there's big carnivorous dinosaurs. This is a perfect dinosaur forest. There's cycads, ferns, and these conifers, some of them can soar 200 feet into the air. I keep getting glimpses of fast-moving dinosaurs in the vegetation along this creek. And I think it's a pack of hunting velociraptors. I don't know what they're hunting yet. I soon found out my hunch was right. Moving through the trees, there were six or seven velociraptors. Six feet long, and they're pretty lethal predators, but they're not interested in me. I think they're stalking bigger prey, and I'm gonna try to follow them. There's their prey. That's what they've been after. A big male protoceratops. He's badly wounded already. But if I circle round, if I'm careful, I should be able to get right next to the kill. As I got closer, I saw how the velociraptors use those lethal claws on their toes. This reminds me of a pack of African hunting dogs in action. They attack persistently, and for both the velociraptors and the dogs, the end result is the same. The prey dies from loss of blood and exhaustion. <laughs> Ceratops is dead now. They're not paying any attention to me. They're totally focused on feeding. I've done this with tigers around a kill. So I think I can move closer. Predators are often at risk and they tackle much larger prey. And the protoceratops fought back. There's a velociraptor over there with a broken arm. Must have been snapped by the protoceratops beak. I've pushed this far enough now. 
it's dangerous here in this dense forest and they may start paying attention to me. It's time to go. It was getting late and I needed to find a safe place to set up camp. I came out of the dense forest to this scrubbier habitat and I found our first real clue. I think this is the nest of the giant claw. It's been broken into, there's monitor lizards here, fossils have been found and monitors in Africa, they break into crocodile nests. Perhaps that's what's happened here. I'd been tracking for almost two days, yet I wasn't any nearer to understanding my quarry. There was nothing else but to continue my search through this extraordinary land. cousin of Tyrannosaurus rex. On any safari you want to see the top predator, but I'm not keen on this. This is so huge, 40 feet long. The wind's blowing towards us, and that's good. He's coming towards us, quick. He may have really good hearing. Turn that off, quick. Tarbosaurus, scary, but a thrill. It's the biggest carnivore around here because they stand tall, stand vertically, tiny limbs at the front, help balance that massive head with that huge skull, eating bites into prey and pulling out chunks of flesh. I am never gonna forget that view. It was time to change my tactics. Across the scrubland were several large freshwater lakes. Instead of searching for claws, I'd wait for him to come to me. This is beautiful. On any safari, you look for the waterhole, they're a magnet for animals, and on a dinosaur safari, it's no different. And this must be the best chance for me to find evidence of the giant claw. The thing about waterholes being a magnet for wildlife, the predators know that too. In Africa, lions wait for zebras coming to drink. This could be a Tarbosaurus coming down waiting for larger prey. So we have really Got to watch our step here. Stop us, us get down. Dinosaurs. Tarbosaurus. 
he's noticed two normally big predators avoid each other. But it looks like there could be a clash and we better get undercover. It was an awesome fight, but Tarbosaurus eventually backed down, and I got a chance to sneak out and observe the Therizinosaurus. I was in for a surprise. A whole herd of them appeared from the forest and started browsing on the trees. Now everything adds up. Those teeth scattered in the skeleton, they were the teeth of a herbivore, the dung crammed with plant vegetation at the nest site. Therizinosaurus, it's a plant eater, not a predator. Look at them now, they're using those giant claws to drag leaves towards their mouths. Those great long necks for reaching up for vegetation, and those pot bellies, those are great fermentation chambers for the tons of vegetation they have to eat. I want to get really close, but of course herbivores of this size, they're not safe. But hopefully, because of my smell, I smell like a mammal, I won't be attacked. The only mammals around at this time there's really, really small rat-like mammals, so they shouldn't be threatened by me. At least that was the theory. As far as I could see, those huge claws weren't for killing things, although they clearly discouraged that huge Tarbosaurus. In fact, these seem quite gentle creatures. And this gave me an idea, something that would bring my quest for the giant claw to a natural end. They seem completely oblivious, even if I speak quite loudly. So I'm gonna go even closer and see if I can touch one. 